Hello, my name is David Esau. I'm an architect with Cornerstone Design here in Ann Arbor and I was the architect for the Hands-On Museum, which is the building you see behind me. Um, we're looking at the new entrance which faces Ann Street, a block off of Huron, which is one of the major streets through Ann Arbor. Um, although the Huron Street um, area is very busy, it was a little too busy for traffic, so the entrance was relocated when the expansion was built um, back onto Ann Street here. Because the entrance is set back from the street, and because the museum is kind of an unusual use where we're trying to give a sense of some of the fun and excitement and learning that goes on inside, we use this very colorful facade with the glazed blocks in the rainbow of colors. You can also see the, the gears behind me, which have become kind of a symbol of the museum. Um, which actually do rotate as you can see in the in the image. We're looking at another vantage point of the entrance to the Hands-On Museum facing Ann Street here in Ann Arbor. Over the top of the new part of the building you can see the original Fireman's Hall Tower poking up. Um, that's the area where the museum started. The part of the building that you're looking at is all expansion onto the original building. The This area was a parking lot when the museum purchased these sites. Um, there was parking underneath a 1960s era concrete building that was used that housed the Chamber of Commerce back in the early 1990s. Um, the expansion was done with the, the metal panels and the glazed block, as I said before, to give a lot of color to the building and draw your eye in as you're driving by on Ann Street. There shouldn't be any mistaking the hands-on museum from the surrounding buildings. After the new fire department headquarters was built, the, the fire um, fireman's hall stood vacant for a while. Uh, the, was eventually developed into a children's science museum with a, a group of citizens led by Cynthia Yao um, leading the charge. Cynthia Yao became the museum's executive director for the first about 18 or 20 years of its existence. The museum started on the first two floors of Fireman's Hall, which is leased to the museum by the city of Ann Arbor. The initial renovation of the building to a children's science museum was done by local architecture firm Meneghini and Overheiser and opened in 1982. The third and fourth floors were renovated by Hobbs and Black in 1987. The exterior of the building recently had restoration done, including new roofing on the sloped roof, tuck pointing on the brick, and fresh paint on the windows. So uh, it's cleaned up and should be ready for another hundred years. Adjacent to the original fireman's hall, you see a glass connector which is used to separate the, the new part of the building from the old part, so there's a clear distinction um, in terms of what is historic and what is new. The rest of the new part um, on this facade was designed to sort of blend with the original building, not compete with it, but to be sensitive to it in design um, within the museum's budgetary limitations, using the brick and the cast stone to match up with the, the limestone and brick detailing on the fireman's hall. The um, sundial up in the peak was a later addition, um, uses the museum's logo with the gears and a couple of children to cast shadows if we had a sunnier day on the, the sundial on the wall so you could tell the time. We tried to carry the, the science theme all around the building inside and out. We're looking at the east facade of the Hands-On Museum in the old Fireman's Hall right now. Um, this was the facade that the Hands-On Museum originally used as the entry with a loading zone where buses could drop off people. The small glass vestibule um, on the right side of the building was designed by my partner at Cornerstone Design, Rich Hainis, back in 1990 to provide a little weather protection for the guests at the museum. Uh, as the museum was running out of space inside, they were definitely running out of space in their foyer for buses that would come in. They were very popular with children's groups from schools and things like that. We're now inside the lobby of the Hands-On Museum, looking at the admissions desk where you pay your entry fee. Behind that is the very popular gift shop, which has lots of science-related toys and, and learning activities. Um, the lobby provides a large space for groups to gather together after they get off their bus or out of their cars or families to gather together. Obviously, restrooms, coat racks, and those kind of services are close at hand. The color from the exterior of the building carries into the lobby and then throughout the rest of the building on the inside as we'll see. There are a lot of quotes on the walls of science and creativity related um, things that have been said by famous people. Obviously banners and displays about a few science aspects to help liven things up and give people something to look at as they're waiting for their group to come together. After you come up the musical stairs, the first thing you see is the building within a building exhibit, which is a small house in front of you, which I also designed. Uh, this showcases the construction and architecture and development industry with this house that has cutaways showing um, 
different building materials as you can see along the side. Plays inside the building within a building exhibit. Talk about construction. There's a, a cutaway toilet. There's things about careers in construction and architecture. Um, exhibits about how to read a blueprint and things like that that talk all about things that relate to the building industry. Local architects, developers, contractors uh, contributed ideas to this as well as money and materials and time. The museum includes exhibits for preschool grades on up. Um, we're looking at the preschool gallery and we'll pan over to the entrance of that which is made out of a replica of the Fireman's Hall, the old building where the museum started. The preschool gallery includes a lot of activities for kids including blocks and balls and a water table that they can play in. The rest of the museum includes a lot of individual exhibits where people can um, turn things and, and lift things and, and play with dials and switches and learn about how lots of different things work and it's good for ages uh, for all ages um, it's been voted one of the most popular date locations for University of Michigan students in the past here we're looking at the tornado exhibit set in an alcove at the south side of the building on the main floor this shows how um, dust and steam can be whipped up into tornado by circulating winds we're standing in one of my favorite vantage points of the Hands-On Museum, which is an overlook into the two-story gallery. You can see the building in a building exhibit on the first floor, and then the second floor above that. The original building was a mishmash of multiple levels, some of which got um, organized into single levels during the renovation, and some of which we still had to work around. The two-story gallery is an added space that was not part of the original building. Um, was done so that the museum could have some taller exhibits when they had temporary exhibits come in. They also got this donated mobile hanging from the ceiling which has lots of the colors used in the exterior of the building. Skylights provide natural daylighting for the space. The museum, unlike an art museum, doesn't have collections that need very carefully controlled light and sound, but um, a lot of daylighting helps both to hold down the lighting bills and also just to give a better feel to the, the exhibit spaces. There's a, a water table for older children against the far wall and lots of individual exhibits here. We're now on the second floor of the museum. The second floor of the expansion is primarily devoted to classrooms and offices. This is the second floor of the original Fireman's Hall where the museum started and still has a lot of individual exhibits. You can see out the windows from that we saw from the exterior of the building. There's a climbing wall um, on one part of the of this space and, and many other exhibits. We're now up in the fourth floor of Fireman's Hall, the old building where the Hands-On Museum started. We're in the Recollections exhibit, which uses um, computer technology and cameras and things like that to project images up on the screen, which are sort of responsive to people's movements um, with different patterns that you can use as a backdrop. So that's what you're watching now. We're standing now in the Light and Optics Gallery in the third floor of Fireman's Hall in the Hands-On Museum. This was sponsored by the DTE Energy Foundation. We're looking here at the laser harp, which uses beams of light instead of strings to create the sounds.